and welcome to Tabor Talk. So I am having some technical issues with my, uh, the syncing of my video and audio with the videos I'm streaming. So I'm just going to, it's just a two minute clip uh, from the Lex Friedman podcast. Eric Weinstein was on. I actually did a video about this. I'm a huge Lex Friedman fan. And they're going to talk about who else? None other than Joe Rogan, of course. And uh, here we go. And then I'll talk afterwards. So watch in the lower left hand corner. I, I feel like the responsibility that you carry, that I carry, this is where Joe Rogan generally removes himself from being, I'm just a comedian. This idea of I'm just a comedian. They all do that. But at this moment in history, like history literally can pivot on yeah. the words of a tattooed, <laughs> uh, oh. ripped 50-year-old, you know, comedian. And I think the same is true with you. Okay, well, I'm, I'm interested, and I care. Speaking of lyrics, uh, you know, there are many here among us who feel that life is but a joke. That's not us. The hour is getting late. That's not us. In the song, the, the, the Joker and the Thief are on opposite sides of Jesus having this conversation over Jesus. You and I, we've been through that. That's not our fate. That's somebody else's fate to throw spitballs at the Internet. That's not your fate. You're an earnest guy. You're filled with love. You're getting the most amazing podcast guests. You're but you can win over the internet. This is the point I'm trying what? to make. That you're saying I'm 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 just a grandpa. I don't know the internet. No, I'm telling you, you're going to get bigger, and then you're going to get cut down. You're going to keep ascending for a while, Lex. And then you're saying, and naturally, there's. I'm a, telling you, I watch the same process. People get up to a certain level, and one of the things that's going on, in my opinion, with Joe Rogan. Is, is that when Joe Rogan starts to talk about his misgivings about Joe Biden, you know, in a way that you find at any bar in America, about cognitive decline in a 77-year-old who's about to be 78, I believe in November. Listen, Joe's, in my opinion, over the top with the Biden stuff, but I've done, I talk about that, but I'll talk. year old person <laughs> slated to win the White House. And you're saying when that idea... Uh, is, is being communicated. Is there something is about the disc concept you talk about? The system naturally Some starts to... Some bad thing happens to Joe or one of Joe's close associates. The ability to destroy people who become inconvenient has been documented. This is what we have done in the past. Whether we are doing it now, we don't know because we are not doing this church, church committee too. In order to know whether or not you are currently destroying American citizens, as we did in the past, and as we have documented, as we found out in 1976, um, the federal government destroyed Americans who had political beliefs that the government didn't want to continue. And I don't know whether you are grasping that. One interpretation of why John Stewart and why Joe Rogan and why Bill Maher and all these people to some extent, hide behind. It's a joke. Yeah. It's because they're trying to find a protected class. Is there some place I can stand and speak the truth which does not result in my being garbage collected? Interesting. I, I guess you're right. My intuition is you can stand. As you gain more power, you can stand. You, you There's a your fight over Joe Rogan Trump. right now. I mean, I, I've talked about it for a few years now. People did not understand how big that program was. People didn't understand long-form podcasting. I was derided by people who I think of as being very shrewd um, for believing in these podcasts as a major force. And most of the people who derided me have said, wow, did, did I not get things? It's like if you started to propose, um, you know, you wanted to do The Sopranos uh, in the era of 30-minute sitcoms. Um, like, you don't get it, man. The American people, they're not interested in these long plot storylines. That's your weird thing. Nobody cares, dude. Everybody just wants short, fast, memorable. And like, okay, so if you do that, you totally miss the opportunity. And You know, the savvy people used to say, kid, let me tell you, nobody ever lost a dime underestimating the intelligence of the American people. No. Well, that was totally wrong because they didn't calculate opportunity costs. I have been talking about the problem of, of Joe for a long time. Um, the problem is, is that when the system wakes up, they're going to want to control it. And they, they have different, they come up with new different mechanisms of doing that. I guess one interesting one is cancel culture. 
Well, look at the number of people around Joe who they've come after since they realized that Joe is really big. Joey Diaz. Pretty conspiratorial, right? Brian Callen. Um, Chris D'Elia. Now, I'm not saying that those are all related, but I do notice that there are at least correlations between when Joe says something and when something bad happens in Joe's universe. It's easier for me to believe that that's happening when it's happening around Joe himself. Yeah. But I'm worried about my friend. <laughs> yeah. And I don't necessarily want to push him towards being more if he doesn't want it. Because I don't think, I don't want to, I don't want to conscript people. He's got a great life. He's got a great situation. He's done a huge service. Thank God. Do you know, yeah. like, yeah. How, how much do I owe Joe just for what he's done for you? To say nothing of what he's done for me or for Brett or for Sam or any of these people. 100%. And, you know, I, I'd like to think that we all. I found out about back, Eric Weinstein but and Lex Friedman I'm from Joe Rogan. Joe. Sam not Har worried. It's not Sam Harris. One but. of the inspiring things about Joe yeah. is, I mean, he's in this war alone. And the way he fights the war is by just enjoying life. Well, that's like his thing. As cooking. long as he stays close to things that he loves and being, you know, one of the things, he's honest about his drug use. He, lo he loves to hunt. So he's, he's just, he does a certain amount of, like, semi-vice signaling up front. And then you just also know him. This is why every time they try to take him down, you use the N-word, you know? Like, unfortunately, everybody knows who Joe is. And... He, yes, he he doesn't. By the way, I never heard Joe say any words. I don't know what that is. School. But whatever. Right? That's not his energy. The fact that you've got some super smart guy who always pretends to be a media. Exactly. Joe's like, a you know, fucking like, genius hey, or super smart. Like, like, Maybe not genius, but okay, innovator. Like super smart guy. One hundred percent. He's admitted to most of the things that you know. You can you can take him down for him because everybody's been effectively in his den or his basement. Think about that studio as his basement. People have hung out with Joe so many hours that you can't tell them something about Joe where they're going to say, wow, I'm going to believe the New York Times and not the hundreds of hours I've spent on the Joe Rogan experience. But the cool thing is that this is what inspires me. This is, is good. The way he's waging war against the system is just by being a good person. Yep. And, and talking enough hours in a week where that message like bleeds throughout the words like, yeah. in the gaps between and that that's so inspiring to me that the good people can win by just being good yep. and well, and he's kind and he's tough yep. and he also he's no pushover no nope. <laughs> no I, I always worry a little bit when i sit down in that chair <laughs> you still get scared that he'll call you on some kind of bullshit that you weren't even aware of no I, the first time i was on the show the energy wasn't great between us yeah. And it was in a sober October situation, yeah. so I think I hadn't understood that. And maybe Joe's a tough interview. Kind of exactly. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I was having fun, but maybe it was just too complicated. I saw it. I thought it was great. The first All right, let me pause this. Right, well, was probably, um, yeah, that, that made me a little nervous for the future. Okay. But then I, I don't necessarily agree with everything Eric said, but pretty much, you know. Uh, really interesting i mean you know I, I as you know i'm like joe's biggest fan i've been following him since 2009 i've seen almost every single podcast right thousands of hours and uh there are a lot of things i disagree with joe uh, but he really is a really good guy he really is a living saint and he's fair although he does have bdr fight and derangement syndrome okay um uh, have a great weekend everyone and uh Good friends, good books, and sleepy conscience. Peace, love, and understanding here at Tabletop.